One of the biggest problems boaters deal with is safety and being prepared when it comes to hitting the waters. Hey. Hello everybody, Nico Payne with you here. We're at Rogers and Rogers here in the Imperial Valley. It's the Salvation Army blankets from the hearts drive. Two people have been arrested and multiple weapons seized as this investigation continues. We talked to community members in Imperial today to see how they feel in what has been called the safest city in California. When we arrived on scene, there were various crews working to put out the fire. We were also able to talk to a witness who said he had a pound on his neighbor's door. Locomotives cost four million dollars and has 4,000 horsepower, making it one of the world's largest sources of geothermal energy. Other important topics will be on the agenda tonight, such as the status of the Salton Sea cleanup, immigration, and access to health care in our region. Today we sat down with local dispatchers to get a real feel of what it's like to be the voice behind the badge. Caltrans will begin work on stage two, which will involve street closures for up to three months. Raining day officially begins tomorrow. You can expect to hear them in the air as early as 8 o'clock in the morning and continuing throughout the rest of the day. Renee Alex, the solar facility is sitting on 17 acres of land and is expected to save the college $8 million over the next 25 years. And the polls are open until 8 p.m. So get out and vote. Perfect. Thank you so much, Debbie. So the polls are open till 8 p.m. So you still have your opportunity to get out and vote. Darlene, I'm here at the Cattle Call Rodeo. They are celebrating 60 years this year. Uh, the second show is going on just behind me. Balloons are free. So once again, we're here at the California Midwinter Fair and Fiesta. I'll send it back to you guys in the studio. Hello and thank you for joining us. I'm Nico Payne. Tonight on 13 on your side, when two young surfers saw a boat capsize after another boat drove recklessly, they came to the rescue of the family that was on board. President-elect Donald Trump says the wall he plans to build along the Mexican border may have some fence sections where appropriate. And people can now bring Cuban cigars and rum into the U.S. and Hershey Chocolate Company is looking for a new boss. Kenneth Craig has more in this week's Money Watch. Bullock will lead an all-female cast in Ocean's 8, a remake of Ocean's 11. The film will be about a group of crooks who pulled off a major high similar to Ocean's Ocean's 11 series starring George Clooney. And we want to thank you for watching 13 on your side this morning. Be sure to join us at 4, 5, 6, and 10 for your latest local news. I feel like no amount of money or whatever is going to take the place of my husband or his life. Charles Sampson was pulled over on December 13th of 2013 for running a stop sign. Police found a meth pipe and shotgun inside Sampson's car and placed him under arrest. While in custody, Sampson began to show distress. His wife, Laverne Sampson, was on the scene and requested help, but that request was not taken seriously. Basically, the case was about their failure to heed the family's request for medical attention and then taking the affirmative step of calling off 911. Audio recordings from the 2013 911 call and video was released of an officer contacting dispatch to tell them to disregard Ms. Sampson's 911 phone call. Charles Sampson died later that evening. I still feel like they still need to be held accountable and pay for what they did. I I still feel like that still haven't been resolved, even though we have come to this agreement and this settlement offer. They still need to be held accountable and paid for what they did. The settlement meant a lot to the family because it was finally an admission, although an indirect admission, that what had happened that night was inappropriate. That night, I will never forget. That night will always be there. But my family and I try not to, you know, dwell on that night. We try to remember the happy times and you know, the things that made us happy about how he was, how fun he was, the stuff that he used to do. And that's what we try to remember. We try not to, we won't forget that night, but we try not to dwell on it because it's not going to change and it's not going to bring him back. Adam was a good guy. I mean, he didn't deserve to die like that. Linda Walker explained that her son had cerebral palsy and that the group he was with were supposed to be his friends. Yesterday morning I saw three people leave the room and then um, this one guy came out, locked the door behind him, took the keys, stuck it in his pocket and walked out and told me my son was sleeping. So I thought it was like 8.20, 8.30 in the morning and I thought, well, why would he still be asleep and the music was on? No. So I went in, I used my spare, my spare key, went in there, checked him, and um, 
he had a snow cut. And that's why I found him. Border Patrol tells us multiple people have been taken into custody. The mother of the victim tells us the person that she believes did this may still be on the loose. Imperial County Sheriff's issued a press release Tuesday afternoon describing the person they are looking for. His name is Armando Taylor. He's described as a male with brown eyes and a shaved head at 35 years old. John Taylor, Edgar Gerardo, and Michael Guerra were arrested and booked into Imperial County Jail. He would have given the show up his back to help anybody. And I don't have money to bury him. They're going to cremate him. Um, I don't know. Walker described a car that the suspect at large may be driving as a blue four-door sedan. The investigation is ongoing. If you have any information, you are asked to contact the Imperial County Sheriff's Office. Reporting in Thermal, Nico Payne, News 11. I was 18 weeks pregnant when he was diagnosed with lower urinary tract obstruction. So there's, there was an obstruction in his urethra. So he wasn't cycling the fluid while I was pregnant. And that fluid backed up to his um, bladder, enlarged his bladder, and then that fluid went up to his kidneys and his kidneys blew up. Eli's parents decided to have fetal surgery when he was 20 weeks, which saved his lungs. But unfortunately, when he was born, his kidneys were both shut down. He was one week old when he started uh, peritoneal dialysis, and we were up at San Diego at Radies. We were there for nine weeks, and then he was released uh, when he was nine weeks old. We brought him home, and from there till now that he's two years old, he's been receiving peritoneal dialysis overnight for eight hours. Lizette and her husband Israel are active members of CrossFit Imperial Valley, a place where over time they feel they have become part of a family. CrossFit has been a lifesaver for us. Uh, we started before we before we knew uh, before I was even pregnant with my son. It just clears our mind. It really does. So that I mean that hour that we have there, it's just like there's nothing in my mind. You're not you're not thinking about his medications or the insurance bills or um, calling which doctor. They're super nice people, very, um, um, with a very, very good um, um, uh, attitude all the time, very positive. So when I heard about that, I was like, wow. And other members within the CrossFit family felt the same way. CrossFit Imperial Valley will be hosting a 5K run walk and showdown this Saturday in support of Eli and his upcoming surgery, which is planned towards the end of June. In Eli's case, his mom was a match and she will be donating her kidney for her son. We knew I was the same blood type and not my husband, which is why he couldn't donate. And then after that, it is pretty common for at least one of the parents to be a match. So they did the cross match and then uh, they said I was a match. And then the next step was to make sure that I was healthy. I was very excited and kind of relieved that hopefully I could give him this, this gift um, that he will not be connected to a machine in order to survive. Um, but at the same time, very nervous because you don't know how long that kidney will last. This Mother's Day will be a special day as the Samaniego family will be together under one roof and they say staying positive makes all the difference. We allow ourselves and I allow myself to sometimes just lose it and cry, scream, be mad at everyone and everything. But then I, have to, I tell myself, okay, okay, snap out of it. Like you can't live on that moment because it's, it's going to be a lifetime of this. 